Welcome back to the final hour of the Gary Sutton Show on WSBA on a Monday morning, getting the brand new week started here. And uh, did you ever just sit back lately and say, good grief? There's so many things out there that are happening right now. We're seeing, by the way, at the moment uh, in Syria where uh, it looks like ISIS has just captured a key city uh, right along the Turkish border. And uh, they're talking about that this morning. And again, if that continues on, we've kind of lost track of ISIS in the last week a bit because of Ebola. It's been the thing all summer, the battling story of the day all summer long. You think about it, from the VA to the Bo Bergdahl thing to ISIS to the IRS to NSA to Edward Snowden to Ebola. Uh, I mean, it's incredible. You've got the stories that dominate. And any of those other stories would by themselves dominate the news for a period of time, but they're knocked off the radar screen, which might be good for some people. I don't know. So uh, with us this morning, so I want to talk a little bit about what's going on right now. There's a brand new story coming out, and it was over the weekend that we kind of saw this emerge. Uh, the Obama team is beginning to kind of circle the wagons. They sent some people out because Leon Panetta, the former CIA head and head of the Defense Department, has hit the White House on Iraq, Syria, and more. Why is he doing that? Wasn't he in the administration that was doing this stuff? Uh, we find out this morning a little bit more about it with Cameron Clifton, political strategist with Clifton Network Partners. She's been with us on our show before. Good morning, Cameron. Welcome back. How are you? I'm well, thank you, and thanks for having me back. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Cameron. I appreciate it. Uh, over the weekend, uh, I, I just read. I saw Julie Pace yesterday. I happened to see her on the uh, uh, Fox News Sunday, and uh, in his forthcoming memoir, which is called "Worthy Fights," Panetta, who, by the way, and I, again, I like to be fair here to, to all sides. Panetta, pretty good Clintonite in his day. Uh, in fact, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, at, at one time was a chief of staff at the White House. Is that correct? Yes, and Panetta had over a 40-year career as a bureaucrat in somewhere in the federal government. But, so, but most recently, yeah. before Obama, it was with the Clintons. And so uh, Panetta says, quote, the White House was so eager to rid itself of Iraq that it was willing to draw withdraw rather than lock in arrangements that would preserve our influence and our interests, unquote, issuing a direct rebuke of the Obama administration's narrative on its strategy to combat ISIL in Iraq. Now, there are people out there talking about, well, th that's really not the case and so forth. And yet, when you have a head of the CIA and a head of the Defense Department coming out and saying this, it does carry a little bit more weight than normal, does it not? Absolutely. And I'll tell you something. When he left, when Panetta left the, the administration, they loaded him with praise and awards and they validated his foreign policy expertise and his um, the value of his advice. And so if he would have put some things in, in his new book that uh, were praising of them and validated their point of view, then and what they need it to be today, then they probably would have given him another medal. He didn't do that, so now they have to um, they have to dispute him. And everyone who is paying any kind of attention at all, regardless of which side of the aisle you were on, if you were on the Democrat side, you were thrilled that the president was keeping his promise to get us out of Iraq. And if you were on the other side of the aisle, you were very concerned about what would happen in a Camar Rouge like um, activities, which is exactly what happened. Um, it wasn't hard to forecast. You know, there, one of the things that I've noticed about this president covering him for almost seven years now, is that he has more unintended consequences than any other president in the history of this country, probably all of them combined. And when I say that, what I mean is everything that goes wrong in his world, he says, well, there's no way we could possibly have known that. So they either lie about it, and we have to wait three or four years for somebody to come out with a book when they don't care about what the administration thinks of them anymore, with some semblance of truth, or in real time, we get the, you know, as you said when you were opening your show, since he got into office, we have not had one single week of peace. Not one. Yeah. It's either domestic or it's foreign or it's global. Or Obamacare, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Yeah. He, he's the most incompetent president ever, and that's saying a lot because we've had a couple of real doozies. Um, but I think that you're right that this lack of peace 
that we as a public have been given is overwhelming to us. And the fact that they change their story when it doesn't work for them anymore, uh, which they have done in every single circumstance. You can go back through every news story, every scandal, every event, every red line drawn, crossed, not done, met, worked on, whatever, and it's n there's not one single thread of consistency in any of it. You know, they we, say what they think we want to hear. Yeah, the two things I didn't even mention, uh, Iran, which is an ongoing thing, the Middle East in terms of Israel oh. and not the, the support that Israel's looking for right now, and of course they're dealing with Hamas. Um, you know, I, you know, you you watch this right now, and I and I wonder if Panetta's book will open up a wave of other books. I mean, most people have said, well, the group that's around President Obama, very close though they may be, have also been extremely loyal to him. Now, obviously, Panetta was somewhat of a holdover from before, or brought back in as, as a number of Clinton's, Clintonites were. But you wonder, will this break down a little bit of that right now? And if it does break it down and more people start to write books and get out there, is that saying that there is a ceiling somewhere where people say enough is enough? I don't think so. I think there will always be um, a market for uh, political books, especially political tell-all books. And you got to understand, too, that, that there are career bureaucrats, and then there are the, the just crats that Obama has surrounded himself with in the White House. I think the, the median age there is under 30. So those people will not write unless they're planning to leave um, politics because they can't afford it. But the older people, the boomers, um, they will definitely write books. And, you know, some of them might even be pseudonyms, like um, the tell-all that happened with the Clintons. Um, which later comes out, you know, who wrote it. But but the bottom line here is there, there's something in Panetta's um, memoir that we should all pay attention to, whether you're a political walk or not. And that is he has forecasted that because we have so mismanaged the Middle East, and actually the truth is we've been mismanaging it since the end of World War One, so we've had 100 years of war um, that we created, actually, uh, not just there but all over the world. But nonetheless... Um, we did that, I think, in some cases um, to get oil, and in other cases uh, because we were trying to help out in civil wars that we believed in were in our best interest for one side or the other to win. Because if you look at every single war that has happened since 1914, it was some kind of civil war. And we were right in the middle of it, right in the thick. Now, we waited a long time to get into World War II, but... You know, we had our Lynn Lease program going, and we were doing other things to help. But had we not, we'd probably all be speaking German now. But when you get down to it, here's what we've got. We've got an incompetent president who cannot forecast anything. He doesn't understand the consequences of his action or his inaction. And in his book, it says, and I believe he's right about this, and I hate it that he's right. I hope we're both wrong, that... The president's incompetence and everybody's willingness to go along with him is going to put us in a 30-year war to defeat and wipe out ISIS. And we will have to do that. Whatever iteration they become, whatever they're named, it will mean our survival. And we're already losing that battle because now we have plagues. But let, me, open let, borders. Me, let me ask you a question, Cameron. You and I have talked a lot before, and uh, you know I respect your opinion, but uh, don't we already have that? I mean, if anybody is being realistic about a war on terror right now, and the face of it is ISIS at the moment, but other groups, Hamas, Hezbollah, you know, uh, you name al-Nusra, the whole group. You're right. Aren't we already right. there? I mean, isn't that the reality you're, of what we're going to do? I mean, you're, we, we, you're right, Gary, yeah. but let's, let's, let's think about this in a different way. Okay. So we had Fort Hood. What does the administration call for Hood? They called it workplace violence. Right. What did happen in, in Oklahoma two or three weeks ago when we that woman beheaded. was beheaded? Right. What did they call that? Yeah, again, it's Work, more... Work, no. Right. So we, what did they call the guy that they let slip through the cracks in Dallas that has infected at least 100 people that they know of, contacts where they're probably infected? They, they, have, they have all those people in isolation now, but... Well, but it, 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 we again, just for, from the credibility standpoint, no one yet has been uh, has presented with anything. But they are under, you know, especially nine of them right now are under very close surveillance, and the others are as That's well. Right. But yeah, so but That's that has right. not but happened. What are we, yeah. But what are we calling that? Letting not the rest of the world, the rest of the free world, within a civilized um, free country, they shut down flights 
from those countries that are infected with Ebola. What did we do? Nothing. No screening, no nothing. We didn't even check. We didn't even make sure. We didn't do anything. We didn't detain them. Nothing. Well, we, we sent them home so, for two more days, in fact, and they affected, you know, potentially affected more people and then came back two days later from the right. 26th of about, September to 28th. About him being in the country. Right. What did they call that? They call that everyone's right to come here. The reason that he won't close the borders is he calls that everyone's right to come here. So until this shows up on your doorstep in your town, even when they had the big to-do in Ferguson, which was just a media event and, and, you know, more dining out for the um, Rainbow Coalition, but that was politically motivated for the administration. Eric Holder in Ferguson? Right. Please. So... So, until this ends up on our doorstep, until you have to defend your family and your world, it will not be real because we're pushing it out to the rest of the world. But the more terrorists that come across the border and the more illegal aliens who come across the border without the intent of sending money back and supporting their families with other nefarious things in mind, and there's lots of them, we will not treat this as the war that it is. If you have a son or daughter in the military and they're over there, you're keenly aware of what the problem is. And you know exactly what their situation is. But the president has effectively been decimating our military from the top down. Well, and you know, you know you, still- I think you hit something here, Cameron. We're talking with Cameron Clifton, political strategist with Clifton Network Partners. You hit something. We... Uh, on Main Street here, are used to dealing with reality. You know, as you mentioned a moment ago, there's sons and daughters and husbands and wives and kids uh, who are who are serving, uh, whether it be in Afghanistan or in Iraq before or elsewhere around the world. We're, we're keenly aware of what they're doing. And yet at the same time, we get the impression that our leaders, our leaders are not keenly aware and that they somehow deal in some kind of coffee clatch mentality where these people are not real. It's rather like moving pieces around a chessboard with that kind of lack of passion. And I, I think that a lot of people are sitting back, and that's one of the reasons that they don't trust them at all. Exactly. The president has missed 60% of the briefings on foreign policy and foreign situations. 60%. If you miss 60% of your shows, what would your station and your network do? Well, they they dismiss me 100% of the time. Uh, that, I would be gone. I, that would be the problem. I did read where, well, I saw one of the excuses for that last week. They said, okay, well, he likes to get them on his iPad. Hang on. Can you go back and forth and ask questions and stuff in a room when you have your advisors there for these daily uh, briefings? Can you go back and forth like that with your iPad? I don't think so. I don't think that yeah. replaces those kinds of high echelon meetings every single day on the security of what's going on against our country around the world. Well, Gary, I think the, the bottom line here is that the president only really cares about one thing, and that is his popularity. And right this minute, he's the least popular president in the history of the world, by Gallup and AP's polls. Cameron, to be, so, con- to, to be continued, always good having you on the show. Thanks so much for stopping by again today. I'll, I'll catch you soon, always. okay? Thanks. Yep. Cameron Clifton with us here on The Gary Sutton Show, the political strategist with Clifton Network Partners.